If you overeat, you have your cheat meals on the weekends and you overdo it, it's gonna go straight to your forearms. Look, I think it's pretty normal to allow for a cheat meal on like weekends, right? Like it's, I would say most people that are going through some kind of like dietary intervention or change or diet in general, they probably cheat or binge on the weekends or maybe one day a week. The problem that we face is most of the studies that look at like overeating and binging, if you want to call it that, they look at it over the course of like two, three, four weeks, which is the case for more severe binge eating. But I think a more practical approach would be to look at it like what happens if you have one day of binge eating, because that's much more likely, right? You diet over the course of the week and then maybe on the weekends you just go to town or you just forget about it, right? Well. There's now a study that was published in the journal Nutrients that looks at a single day of overeating in a significant amount, like single day binge eating. And I thought that this was applicable, especially when it came down to like fasting, intermittent fasting, because it's very easy after a longer fast to go just totally ham and go overboard on the calories because, well, you've been in a deficit for so long and your hunger signals are all whacked out. So this is very, very relevant. So let's go ahead and break it down. But after this video, I want you to check out Zero Fasting. It is a fasting app. And even if you're not fasting, it's something to check out because it is tremendous content, but it also is just a fasting timer. So it allows you to have sort of like a community aspect and allows you to track your fast and allows you to track it with other people, create challenges, all kinds of stuff. Plus there's a bunch of content from yours truly on there as well if you want to check it out. There's a free version and a paid version. But I went ahead, I put a link down below. They're a big supporter of this channel. I've been involved with them for a while now. So you can use that link down below to check them out on the App Store. Okay, let's go ahead and dive in. So this study that was published in the journal Nutrients took a look at 15 people that were very healthy. Okay, healthy, insulin sensitive, what would they would consider metabolically flexible people. People that could handle their food pretty well. They said, we wanna see what happens if we have you on a controlled diet, your normal controlled diet for a week, and then have you binge for a day. Okay, so they brought them in, they took all their anthropometric readings, like their characteristics, their height, their weight, their resting energy expenditure, all kinds of stuff like that. And they found their resting energy expenditure was somewhere in the ballpark of like 3,300 calories. So they said, for the next seven days, we're gonna monitor what you eat, and you're gonna eat about 3,300-ish calories per day with pretty even macros between all of you, so we know where you're at, okay? Prior to this seven-day adventure, they had them come in in a fasted state and they gave them what is called an oral glucose tolerance test. They gave them 75 grams of pure glucose to see how they responded to this glucose. And they all responded pretty well because they're healthy, metabolically flexible people that can handle it, okay? And then they went about their merry way, okay? Regular exercise, all this stuff. And then on the seventh day, they said, it's go time. It's time to quote unquote binge. So they had them consume 78% surplus of their diet. So that means that they consumed close to 6,000 calories on that day, okay? So that is a lot, almost double their normal amount. But the realistic thing is, is if you've ever counted calories on like a cheat day or anything like that, it's not that hard to get to 6,000 calories. And they also made it very real world. They said, we're gonna have this come from about 68% fat. So it was a very controlled binge. They gave everyone the same thing, same macros. So 68% of those calories were fat because that's realistic. If you binge, even if you were trying to get carbohydrates, if you're eating cakes and pies and all those kinds of things, you're gonna end up getting a bunch of fat in, okay? So, of course, they probably felt fine while they were doing it, but then the next day on day eight, they had them come in again to the research lab in a fasted state, and they gave them another oral glucose tolerance test to see how they would respond to it now. Results were pretty wild. Okay, first off, they on average gained about 1.8 pounds in one day. I'm going to throw that away because I'm gonna disregard it. I think a lot of that is probably water and inflammation and probably digestive load from consuming 6,000 calories. So let's forget about that one. But their whole body insulin sensitivity went down 28%. That is huge. Their ability to deal with carbohydrates decreased by 28% after just one day of binging. Now, I'm not trying to scare you away. I have a solution for you with this. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying don't ever enjoy yourself. It's just wild what one day can do, and I'll explain what's happening and why it was actually bad. Okay, their plasma glucose increased by 17% postprandial. So it means like they didn't respond. They ended up having high levels of glucose. Their body did not actually suck up the glucose. Ordinarily, your body would balance that out pretty good. They also found that insulin increased like 16%. 
Interestingly enough, triglyceride levels did not increase, but there's actually a mechanism that I know of for that. Uh, usually, it's, we have like a storage form of triglycerides. So a lot of times, the triglycerides will go into a storage center in the enterocyte. So we won't always see an increase in triglycerides in the plasma and the blood level right after like binging. But you might see it two or three days later after you have more meals and the storage center overfills. But either way, triglycerides aren't the question right now. So what is going on? What happened here? I have talked about in other videos about something called metabolic inflexibility, but more importantly, metabolic gridlock. At the mitochondrial level, we do not deal with multiple energy substrates coming in at rapid pace. Okay, we can deal with a little bit of fats and carbs at the same time. We can deal with a fair bit of just fats at one time. We can even deal with a fair bit of just carbs at one time, but we cannot deal with a lot of fat and a lot of carbs at the same time. Basically, the gateways for metabolic traffic, if you want to call it that, never get a chance to fully open. If we load ourselves with fat, we can open up and have fat transporters and everything getting into the mitochondria because we're understanding the fat there. If it's just carbs, we can open up that gateway all the way. If it's a little bit of fat and a little bit of carbs, yes, we can open up the gateways for that. But if it's a ton of fat and a ton of carbs, we're, we're never fully opening the gates. So we end up with just the inability to deal. It's metabolic gridlock. You have all these substrates coming in and they're blocking and they're not able to get in. There's traffic at the mitochondria. Anytime that you overfeed, you heighten this even more. So anytime you're in a caloric surplus in addition to this like wide variety of macros coming in at once, then you really damage things. So the body is like in shock and it doesn't know how to deal. That's what the problem was. It wasn't the fact that they had a little bit of a caloric surplus. Okay, they, well, a lot of a caloric surplus, but it's the fact that you took healthy people and then all of a sudden you put them under metabolic gridlock. If you were to continue this on and on and on, the rebound would not be very easy. After one day, the rebound is probably pretty easy. But I have to say a very important disclaimer is that if you do a single day cheat, single day binge like this, and it's going to happen from time to time, if you continue to do even moderate binging for subsequent days, you will gain fat a lot faster because you are already in a metabolically inflexible state. It is important that you don't overreact but that you do take measures to modulate insulin resistance a little bit and to try to improve insulin sensitivity. So I would not recommend going right back into a fast because that can develop a complete binge eating problem, but I would recommend that you do what you can to control insulin by having the next day be very intense exercise or at least moderately intense exercise that is involving resistance training to actually suck up the glucose and improve insulin sensitivity and bring the GLUT4 transporter to the membrane. But I also would recommend keeping carbohydrate intake pretty low. So I don't recommend bringing the calories super low because the goal here isn't to offset the caloric surplus you had the day prior. The goal here is to get you back to being insulin sensitive. It's almost better to keep the calories at your normal maintenance. Go right back to maintenance but keep the carb intake lower to improve the insulin sensitivity and then go back into a deficit. Because a deficit's not gonna do you a whole, whole lot of good if you're still super insulin resistant or not sensitive. So work to get insulin sensitive again and negate the negative metabolic gridlock effects of the single day binge and then come back to your normal deficit after that. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. Thanks again for watching.